Hi friends! Thanks for coming back to listen to another story today. You know there's a special holiday coming up. Easter. I love that there are books about every holiday. You can find a book about any topic and I think that's pretty cool. So today I wanted to read you an Easter story. So I brought a friend along to help. Say hi. My story is about an Easter bunny, but it's a special Easter bunny. Well, different. What do you think the Easter bunny is like? You think he's nice? Think he's friendly? Funny, maybe? Maybe? He tells jokes? Do you think he's scared? Think he's sad? Is the Easter Bunny sad? Hmm. Mad? Think there's a mad Easter Bunny? Hmm. Let's look at today's book to find out what our Easter Bunny is like in this story. The Grumpy Easter Bunny. Hmm. That's why he's a little different. I wouldn't think most Easter Bunnies are grumpy. This story is written for us by Justine Corman. Let's read to find out why he's grumpy. Why he's different than the other Easter bunnies I would think of. Still cute. Like this guy. Deep in the forest, on the night before Easter, the bunnies danced under the moon. They were as happy as, well, Easter bunnies, except for one grumpy bunny named Hopper. Looks grumpy, arms folded, kind of pouting away from his friends. After the bunnies had finished dancing, Sir Byron, the great hare, told them, you are the messengers of spring. Now go and spread love and joy. Hopper kicked a stone and grumbled, huh, joy and love, ha, I hate that mushy stuff. There he is kicking the stone. I wonder what his deal is. As he waited in line for his wheelbarrow, full of Easter treats. Hopper grew even grumpier. What was the point of making treats all year and then running your paws off to hide them for someone else to find? That's what he's thinking. Hmm. Looks kind of down. While the other buddies gladly begin their rounds, Hopper dragged his already tired feet. Hopper gazed at the heap of chocolate bunnies, marshmallow chicks, caramels, raspberry creams, and other delights. I wish all these treats were mine, he thought hungrily. Then his ears flew up with a wicked idea. They could be mine, he said. Who will ever know if I keep the goodies or give them away? Hopper ran to his burrow, pushing the heavy wheelbarrow as fast as he could. Uh-oh. Hopper tried to roll the heavy wheelbarrow inside, but it was too wide. It's not fitting. Hmm. He pushed and shoved and pushed some more. He was so busy pushing, Hopper didn't notice a strawberry cream-filled egg fall off the wheelbarrow. The egg rolled down the shady path toward the stream. Hmm. Maybe we'll hear more about that egg later. Hopper puffed up his tiny chest. <gasps> then he pushed with all his might. The wheelbarrow lurched forward. And the grumpy bunny fell flat on his face. Ouch. That was almost as hard as delivering the treats. Hopper complained. Ugh. But at last, 
the goodies were inside. Hopper ran his paws through the mountain of candy. He juggled jelly beans. Pretty good at that. And made marshmallow nests for the chocolate eggs. Got a grand old time now. Then he began to eat. And eat. And eat. Oh boy. Hopper gobbled and gnawed the whole night through. He didn't feel so grumpy, but he did feel very sticky and a little too full. Finally, he decided to go to the stream to get a nice cool drink. Hopper stopped when he heard a meow, meow, meow. He peeked out from behind a tree and saw Lottie, Spotty, and Dottie, three kittens who lived nearby. Hmm. Hopper hid in the reeds and listened. They must be here somewhere, Spotty meowed. Meow. This is Easter morning, isn't it? Lottie asked. Oh dear, Hopper thought. The kittens are searching for Easter treats and they aren't going to find any. Hopper felt an uncomfortable stirring deep inside. Should he have eaten the treats? Had he done the wrong thing? What do you think? Then, to Hopper's great surprise, Dottie cried, I found one! She found the strawberry cream filled egg that had fallen off his wheelbarrow. Remember it rolled down that stream? Before Hopper could say a word, Spotty and Lottie rushed to their sister. I'm the oldest! Spotty said, grabbing for the egg. I'm the hungriest, Lottie argued. I found it, Dottie squeaked. Hopper felt terrible as he watched the kittens wrestle and hiss in the dewy grass. Suddenly, the kittens rolled right over the egg and smashed it to bits. They stopped wrestling and stared at the gooey mess. We should have shared, Spotty mewed, meow, sadly. We shouldn't have been greedy, Lottie sighed. We'll divide what's left of it, Dottie said firmly. Then the three kittens hugged. Aww. Oh dear, Hopper said to himself. He turned away from the kittens, only to find himself nose to nose with Sir Byron, the great hare. Why haven't you delivered to your area? Sir Byron demanded. Hopper opened his mouth, but no sound came out. The chocolate that was smeared all over his face said it all. Now he feels bad. He feels guilty for what he did. Eating all that candy instead of giving it away like he was supposed to, hiding it for all the others to find. Let's see what happens next. Come with me, Sir Byron said. Hopper followed him to the burrow and the kittens tagged along behind. Sir Byron gave the kittens what was left of Hopper's goodies and made them honorary Easter bunnies. Now go, Sir Byron told the kittens, spread joy and love. The great hare turned to Hopper. As for you, he said, you shall watch the kittens hide your treats. Perhaps then you'll understand what it means to be an Easter bunny. It took a while for the kittens to get the knack of hippity hopping, but they had no trouble at all spreading joy. Hopper followed as they crossed the forest, hiding a brightly colored egg here, a chocolate bunny there. 
He watched as young gophers, squirrels, moles, and mice squeaked with delight as they found their treats. Ooh! Hopper looked up and saw the clouds change from pink to fluffy white. He saw the first crocuses open their petals. Hopper felt a lump in his throat. He'd always just worked his route, then gone home to soak his sore paws. He had never noticed the wonder and magic of Easter before. It made him feel happy inside. Just then, Sir Byron appeared at his side. What do you think about Easter now, Hopper? It's wonderful, Hopper said. From then on, Hopper was glad to be an Easter Bunny. He didn't mind spending every day of the year making treats for others to enjoy. And the next year, for the first time in his life, Hopper was eager for the night before Easter. Remember at the beginning of the book, the night before Easter, they were dancing around the moon and he wasn't. But the next year on the night before Easter, he was excited. Couldn't wait. He was eager, they said. Finally, the magic night arrived. Hopper, Hopper's feet felt as light as marshmallow chicks as he danced the Easter Bunny dance. He couldn't wait to get his wheelbarrow heaped with treats and hide them all over the woods for happy youngsters to find. Do you see which one Hopper is? Right there, right? Big change from the beginning of the story. When Sir Byron gave Hopper his wheelbarrow, he said, since you have an awfully big root for one little bunny, I've arranged for you to have some helpers. Hopper laughed as the three little kittens popped out from behind the great hair. Meow. And as they pushed their delicious load through the moonlit forest with a hippity hoppity, meow, 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 Hopper realized just how much happiness Easter brings. Seems to me like that bunny, Hopper, learned a lesson in this story. What lesson do you think he learned? Send me a message and let me know what you think. Happy Easter, everyone.